You're listening to Creepy Geeks Podcast. So it begins again. Welcome back to Creepy Geeks Podcast. This is Season 6, Episode 238. Ghosts of Kiev, listener comments, and time is for suckers? That's right. So here we are. <clears throat> Glad to have you here. My name is Greg. I'm Omi. And we're your host of the Creep Geeks Podcast. Yep. That's right. All right. So anyway, we got a lot of stuff to talk about as we normally do. We uh, find stuff that we find to be interesting on the internet and we talk about it, typically paranormal, paranormal in nature, although we are not exclusively paranormal. <laughs> I feel like I have to add that in there. <laughs> well, I don't want to be pigeonholed, man. Yeah. Nobody puts pigeon in the corner, right? No. Yeah. So it's just kind of one of those things where we find stuff and we'd like to talk about it. We'd like to be relevant with current events and technologies and things like that. And even if that means having an unpopular paranormal type opinion, we will. Sure. Yes. Now, before we get started, um, a couple podcast episodes ago, and if you follow the podcast, we do appreciate it. And if it's your very first time listening, we appreciate it. And if you're a patron, we really appreciate it. Yep. Um, we asked if you would uh, like to, t- you know, take a second and vote in the Paranormality's favorite podcast of the month contest. Yeah. Now, in our show notes, we have included a link that you can click on, and you can vote for us three times. <laughs> so if we all, <clears throat> if all, if all of our tens of listeners get together and click that link, you know, we, we might actually get something. Now, last time we got. Well, like six, I yeah. think. We were in there. Yeah, we were in the grid. We were really surprised. Yeah. Because I, I immediately asked Omi, I'm like, how many times did you vote? You didn't cheat, did you? Because we can vote. She was like, no, I voted early and voted often, like you're supposed to do in all elections. That's not right? what I said at all. <laughs> Actually, Sometimes I, said I make both. stuff up. I will admit, <laughs> sometimes I'm a maker-upper when it comes to my internal conversations that I have with my wife, as wives do to their husbands as well. You know, I actually like, said, Oops. You, why didn't you take the trash out? I just asked you to do that 10 minutes ago. And you're like, I was taking a nap 10 minutes ago. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. That happens. I actually said, oops. Yeah. Yeah. See? So that meant we actually got genuine votes from some of our genuine listeners. Shocked. I'm yeah. shocked, I tell you. So thank you to everybody who did vote. Yes. So please vote Very for us again. It. All right, so this particular podcast, if you don't know, um, we're an offbeat podcast, and we, we explore the paranormal, cryptid, supernatural, uh, strange things circulating the web, right? Everything from cryptids to ghosts to UFOs to, huh, stuff that you go, huh. Yeah, and that's what we do. In this particular episode, we kind of want to touch on modern, more current events that are happening in a, in a way that hopefully doesn't get us banned, because that seems to be the, the trend. We used to be not too conspiratorial or anything tinfoil hattie yeah but it was enough to where we lost all of our social at one time so you know this kind of becomes a thing so and if you see something interesting or something very tinfoil hat adjacent and you share it with us and we don't necessarily talk about it or share it it's probably because we have that valid concern we're watching too many other people who we respect and have you know, very great theories. We're watching too many of them get shut down. Yeah. It's not because we don't love you. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And this has been an ongoing struggle with us because you can get super out there and we just <laughs> would rather not. Okay. So in our last podcast, we kind of hinted to the fact that we had a weird audio message come in because we have a way for you to contact us and leave a message. And that phone number that we have is toll free with the Roswell area code is Five seven five two zero eight four zero two five. Yes, <clears throat> and we got this weird message. Now we put it up for patrons to listen to, right? The only, only way I could do that was convert it into a video and then upload it to Patreon. Yeah, and then after a couple of days, I went ahead and let it go so that everybody could see it on YouTube because we do have a YouTube channel that we have to build back up again. 
yeah. for Creep Geeks. So if you just go to YouTube and type Creep Geeks, you'll find us. And we also have the Facebook groups and things like that. Anyway, uh, played it, and a couple people made comments. Uh, one of them was uh, Spooner made comments. Oh, that's my turn signal. <laughs> You know, and, and there, was, there was some comments like that, you know, and I'm like, no, that's not what it is. But I don't know what it is exactly. It's just kind of hard to say. But, you know, as I used to hunt stuff uh, by sound when I was in the Navy, and I'm not a, not a subsurface sonar tech. I was a surface sonar tech. It just made me think it sounded pretty strange. And we were going to play it, but we didn't. So what we're doing is, is reaching back to the last podcast to circle back to this podcast so that we could play it for you mm-hmm. so we could get your opinion. Okay. And we're going to do that right after this. You like that? Yes. We don't have a, we don't have a commercial or anything. We just. <laughs> um, but before we do play that, you know, it's just something that, hey, if you have an opinion on it and you want to give us uh, your opinion, just let us know. Yeah. Uh, call that 575-208-4025 phone number. Or you can email us. That's going to be contact at creepgeeks.com. Or you can reach out to us on social like somebody just did on our Facebook page, Creep Geeks Podcast. We're real easy to find. Just type that into Facebook or pretty much anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, including our website. You can go to creepgeeks.com. We have a contact spot. Okay, so we're going to play this sound for you. If you want to turn it up or put on headphones, you can do that. Uh, the first it's the first section is the actual sound, not sped up or anything. And then the second section is because there will be a gap in the middle. So, you know, if you don't hear us talk for about 10 seconds, it's not because we're not listening. It's because there's a gap. Uh, I slow it down a little bit. So that way, you know, the hope was to get a better understanding of what it was. And, you know, spoiler alert, still don't know. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and play it. So here we go. still here just keep Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so trying to figure out what that sound is, you know, there's a couple of different things. It's like layers on top of layers, right? You've got clicking that happens at certain intervals, and then you have some louder clicks on the verge of clunks that happen in certain intervals, and you have a rhythmic sort of machinery hum, if you will, that occurs. So it's just kind of a strange thing, and received it and got a similar message like that once before, never thought anything of it, but then my, my thought one day when I was listening to it was like, what if it's like some kind of doomsday clock counting down? Huh? Or, you know, maybe, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So it's just something I thought was interesting, and it got me really thinking, what if my phone, you know, is being tapped? And I'm like, well, that's a Google, Google number, so it's probably not the phone being tapped, but it's just kind of like, what do we think that is, you know? 
Well, and I don't know. Hold on. Because it could be that we're secretly being listened to. Now we're on some kind of list. I have to know. I hope we're that popular. I, I was going to address like uh, Spooner's joke about it being his turn signal. Because if you listen hard enough, it's clearly not his turn signal because you hear tick, tick, tonk, like now, tonk, tick, just, tick, just tonk. Just for clarity, though, if yeah. if it is your turn signal, you need to replace your flasher relay. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times the flasher relay for your hazard lights and your turn signal are connected. And if yeah. it's flashing that slow, that really relay, relay needs to be fixed. But was he saying that seriously or was it a joke? I, I don't know. I think it was a joke. I was going to comment, but then I didn't. Because he always jokes. Yeah. You know, so. He's but. a jokester. <laughs> He's a tricky guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. That's just kind of an idea of, you know, maybe we're being listened to. Because that's, that's, a, that's a question, right? That's a, like our question of the day. Or a question of a whenever you're listening to the podcast. I don't. You know, how popular do you need to be before you're actually being tracked and listened to? Oh, please. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, are we that popular now? Is that cool? That sounds that, like that, some a, between commercial is break a cool thing, bait or? to get somebody to watch a TV show. <laughs> no, but I don't know, man, because that's what I thought. You know, I'm sitting there because sometimes I'd be, I'd be doing this stuff at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning going, what is that? What if we're secretly being surveilled surveilled right. yeah i don't know so if you have an opinion please let us know but uh just so you know we do talk about our dinner time stuff and our dinner time after this particular podcast is going to be home baked peasant bread and spaghetti brought to you by omi <laughs> thanks thanks a lot. just say what <laughs> see we're gonna have i'm to gonna see. do the dishes when we get done yeah right that's and, and you know and then you're gonna you you you're gonna cook it and i'm gonna you clean up. We might have to start a second loaf of peasant bread. Yes. It may or may not have gotten a little toasty on the top. Well, well, you, okay, so for those of you listening at home, we're going to give you some dirt. You said, should I start the bread? I'm like, I don't know. Let's do the podcast. I didn't know you had already put it in there. And then you looked at me like, do I smell bread burning? I didn't even <laughs> think it was cooking at all. So I'm sitting here yucking it up thinking we got like an hour and a half, you know? No. My bread is burnt. <laughs> It's burnt bread, Omi. <laughs> now, that being said. It smells wonderful. I am a frugal. To, oh, oh, it's a little crispy. I am a frugal. Uh, I'm a cheap geek, so I will whack the top right off that bread and slather it with butter. I'll have you know the rest of it is turning out great, except for that one top layer. Except for, for the reason. except for the best part. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's what we're going to have for dinner because we do that. We figured we would share. You know, kind of like what, because it's kind of what we do. We do the podcast and then we have a, a nice dinner. We always have a nice dinner, but, you know, a little nicer than most. A lot of times it's, you know, some kind of crock pot something. Yeah. But, you know, say, man, spaghetti. It's going to be spaghetti with sausage and ground beef. And then because the store didn't have Texas toast, I'm making bread for Texas toast. You know. Don't blame it on the store. Well, bread's delicious. Shush. All right, and since we're peasants, it's peasant bread. So, so I don't know. So there you go. That that was a strange noise to hear, and I just wasn't quite sure. You know, it didn't sound, I don't know. I just wanted to share the share. It. Okay. A little, little action there. Okay, so now we're all current, and now we can talk about some stuff. Like last time we talked about sky booms and things like that and some sky quakes and earthquakes and stuff we've been having locally. Well, this time it's a little bit different. It's a little bit far-reaching over to the other side of the world, wherever it is. There's a conflict going on. We're not going to say what it is for fear of being banned, and I know people are just say you're going to be banned. You never know. Yeah. You never know. All right. This goes into the idea of urban legends and modern tulpas, right? Mm-hmm. So, if you've been paying attention to some of the conflict that's been happening over there, uh, there is the ghost of Kiev. Okay. It's, it's, this fighter pilot's been shooting down uh, a much larger army's jets. Okay. Yeah. You know, and they make seeing... it like he's just like out there rattling around on some old, you know, jet kind of a thing. I remember seeing some of the posts, like, what, less than a week and a half ago about yeah. this guy. Yeah. This it's... is, like, relatively... You know, like a recent thing, right? Yeah, the ghost of Kiev on like Facebook and Twitter, right? And, and stuff people like, that. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, and I, I don't want. It just seems like a lot of the posts that we see are almost like, you know, you you have one well established army, and then you've got like Florida man, you know, kind of escapades happening, 
you know, yeah. like farmers taking tanks with tractors, you know, stuff like but that, that riding down the road, yeah. you know. Like, hey. That stuff's on TikTok, though. I, I like, know, yeah. yeah. But you're not seeing a lot of that stuff anywhere else, so it's just kind of a strange thing. But it just seems to be, it's just kind of weird, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but according to military.com, uh, Ukraine's fighter, uh, fighter ace, the ghost of Kiev, or Kiev, Kiev may be a myth, but it's lethal as war morale, right? So, yeah. I kind of get what they're saying. And, you know, if you look at, like, World War One and Two, and you had fighter aces and things like that, like the Red Baron is probably the most popular one because it's a pizza, it's Snoopy, it's it was, you know, you're that scared. Yeah. And put the fear into, you know, a lot of the pilots out there. So here we are, 2022, having this sort of thing pop up again, where whether this is true or not, Right, because according to military.com, these are unconfirmed rumors spread widely across the internet of a mysterious Ukrainian fighter pilot in a MiG 29 hmm. gunning down six enemy, six enemy aircraft in the first hours of the war. So, on social media, he's been dubbed the Ghost of Kiev, and it's been taken to the skies ever since the invasion. And, and so, it kind of, and so allegedly up to 21, you know, shot down 21 jets. Yeah. So, um, and they're saying that. Hey, the ghost of Kiev, however, is almost certainly a myth, albeit an incredibly useful one. As you know, the in other words, it, it's creating. He's a, it the the myth or mythos of it is a good way to rally people together, you know, to resist the the Russian right. attack. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's also disheartening for the other side. But at the same time, this becomes one of those things where it turns. It's is it urban legend or is it a tulpa, which basically turns the idea of something into something. So now when people are seeing stuff in the skies above Ukraine, they're attributing it to the yeah. ghost of Kiev, which uh, as we know, a tulpa is where if you put enough belief behind something, it actually manifests. Right. So are you saying some of these more recent reports might be manifestations? No, I'm just saying that some of these more recent reports could be what's going to cause a manifestation because, okay. you know, at what point, if you if you're flying, all right. So let's just say you have your jets that are colored differently and look slightly different than the opposing jets, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you fly by and somebody looks up and says, "Look, there's the ghost of Kiev," you become the ghost of Kiev hmm. as a fighter pilot. Okay. So eventually, does that turn into something? So it's kind of like with modern urban myth type things and the idea of tulpas. Eventually, it will turn into something. So this person already has a legend. Even if it was like one person or two people or just a different, you know, multiple different jets, you know, whatever, or even if it's a complete lie, there's a legend behind this already. The first thing I thought of was like the Dread Pirate Roberts. Yeah. You know, it yeah. wasn't actually Wesley. It was like all like all the other guys before him. Yeah, exactly. You know? Or, you know, and that's how, you know, a lot of like... That's how a lot of superheroes were, right? And yeah. if they were an ongoing sort of a, a legendary type thing, like uh, look at Black Panther, right? It wasn't he wasn't just one Black Panther; it was yeah. like generational. Yeah. But if this is a thing, um, it would be something to see maybe five, ten years from now. If maybe that becomes like I seen the ghost of you know Kiev, yeah. or I seen you know this, and you know who, who knows. I, I mean, it is going to be hard. Like this, this particular article is trying to be. Um, very neutral about it. Like, well, we don't have any confirmation from the other side and they're, they're trying to say how it's, it's a good uh, morale booster, something to rally behind. But I, I want to believe like the TikTok videos and some of the, t the footage, yeah. even though some of it, yes, <laughs> has been debunked. I'd like to believe it. Well, and that, that's part of it too. You, you can't trust any media that you're seeing regardless yeah. of what they're saying. And that's part of the problem. It's like, you know, I mean, who, whose propaganda are you going to believe? One side versus the other, TikTok versus whatever, and you know, it's, that's what makes it so difficult. It's so muddy. Yeah. Everything is so muddy. Like in the past three, four years, it's really muddy. Every even longer than that, but I mean, it just seems to be really Has muddy. Has it been on muddy since twenty twelve? Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't even know because time is for suckers, and that's what we're going to talk about next. But you know. It's just the idea. I thought, like, well, there you go. Well, I wonder if this is going to create, you know, a, a thing that turns into a thing, kind of like Slender Man and the rake. And people are like, ooh, rake, rake's not real. But yeah. allegedly it was created because of people putting thought into it. I swear, it. I have to wade through so many of those. And, like, earlier today, um, some dude was making claims about skinwalkers in Appalachia. And 
Ron from Well and Weird had to hop in there and go, no, buddy. <laughs> no. And like I read through the whole thing and I was just like, thank you, Ron. That, instead yeah. of going into like my big old no, buddy, I just yeah. thank you, Ron, because I just couldn't handle all the misplaced belief just because yeah. somebody saw a movie or a TV show. I don't want it. Or a TikTok. Yeah. Perpetuated, you know? you know? And there was, it's funny you bring it up. I watched the TikTok where there's some trees moving around, right? You have like a forest of trees. I think it's in Alaska or Canada, somewhere like that, right? Yeah. And you see like one tree just whipping around all crazy from a distance. Ooh. And they're like, oh, it's, it's, it's the skinwalkers. I'm like, okay, I seen that on TV as being, is this a possible Bigfoot uprooting a tree and running around with it? And plus it would have been. And uh, at the end of the day, my first thought was not Bigfoot grabbing a tree and just running around with it yeah. like all Scottish rites pull the, you know, <laughs> like that, th- what do you call it? The throw. Highlander thing. games. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, wow. I watched a show called Swamp Loggers where they have this machine. It's a logging machine. It grabs it by the base. This little chainsaw thing whips around, cuts it, and they pick the tree up and they walk it where they want it. Mm-hmm. They can. Make it horizontal, slide through like eight feet, cut it, and keep on going. Then they stack it. Was it during the day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so I'm like, my first thought was, oh, it's just loggers, you know, picking right. dead trees to, you know, do uh, the correct forest hus- husbandry. But it was like skinwalkers. So I'm like, what? first off, I have never heard of uh, of that creature being able to just uproot a tree and run around with it. Now, Wendigo in the dark of night in First Nations territory, maybe, but again, dark of night. Not a tree that big. I'm thinking, you know, swamp logger, a couple hundred horsepower, hydraulics, and cutting blades is really what it is. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. So, they got the Ghost of Kia thing. It's probably going to turn into something, maybe. It's just something to kind of keep an eye on. And the only reason why I really thought about that with this particular thing is that this is it's sort of a wide, wide audience for this kind of thing. There's enough maybe ideas behind it input you know from all over the place to give it some horsepower to see what it really may be and it may just be a complete bunk thing you know since you know you can't really trust the murky waters these days with social medias yeah so yeah i don't know it's kind of weird and so when we talk about time is for suckers this is a recent article that kind of came up where it talks about how archaeologists identifies a lost timekeeping system in the stones of stonehenge i can just look at this and be like no <laughs> Well, it, okay, so, you know, <laughs> when you get older and you don't have time to do anything and you're like, you know, when you were younger, you're like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to do whatever I want when I get older and all that stuff. And you get older and you don't have time to do anything. And as you get older, time starts to go by a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting around grumpy one day and you go, well, who even, who even figured out time to begin with? This is some <laughs> bullshit that basically came about by humans, right? Yeah. And you know what it is? It's just accountability. Okay. You know, if you... Don't have any inkling of the idea of time, and you say, "Hey, caveman Joe, I you know, can you meet me soon?" Sure. And then like six days goes by, and here comes caveman Joe, and you're like, "Dude, where were you?" Well, I came soon. Well, that's not soon. You were gone a long time, right? Mm-hmm. So my idea of soon and your idea of soon can be two completely different. So I think that what they had to do was come across a way to account for time so that everybody's on the same page. Because if you don't have the same idea of time, communication doesn't happen effectively. Okay. So now you got people looking at like the stars and stuff and figuring things out to make everybody accountable. Mm-hmm. It's an accountability thing. So who really says that our week is seven days long, 365 days in a year, and some things like that are set in the stone because of what we're using to give us the idea of time, right? The structure of it, the construct of it, like 365 days for, you know, the solar solar year and all those other garbage, right? Mm-hmm. But who says it's really seven days for a week, right? So 365 days equals a tropical year. Right, so it's 365 and a quarter days equals a tropical year. And when you look at some things like Stonehenge, it doesn't exactly work. Yeah. No, I'll be honest. When I see Stonehenge, I don't see a clock. I, I don't, you know, and I don't see how the windows, you can look through here and see different solstices and all that stuff. I'm just, that's just not how I'm wired, right? I'm like, well, all right, I guess so, right? I mean, I believe I guess so. Um. But they're saying that, you know, there's some new findings that are based on a careful analysis of the number of the positioning of the stones that make up the Stonehenge site, as well as comparisons with other ancient calendar systems 
because it's believed that Stonehenge is a calendar, and it may have influenced the builders of Stonehenge, and they say that studies of Stonehenge as a way of tracking time and seasons stretch back for centuries, but until now it's remained unclear exactly how it may have worked. Because when I look at it, I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't know how it works. <laughs> you know? But there's been some new research that was built on a previous study revealing that the Sarsen stones that make up the bulk of the Stonehenge all came from the same source, which probably means they were put together at the same time and probably intended to work together. You know? Mm-hmm. And so they talk about the rings and all the boring stuff, and it says, Archaeologists have long suspected that Stonehenge, a calendar of sorts due to the positioning of the stones and their alignment with the solstices, and new research adds to the interpretation. So they're saying, okay, so it's more than likely an actual calendar, and it matches the solstices. Or is it solstice size? I don't know. Right. Solstice. Solst- yeah. And the proposed calendar works in a very straightforward way. Each of the 30 stones in the Sarsen circle represents a day within a month, and then it's divided into three weeks each of 10 days. No, I can't. I cannot do 10. I could never do a 10-day week. It doesn't matter. I know. You're doing seven longer days. I, so, okay. You're You're saying... I can't do that because to me that's the equivalent of working a ten hour shift, <laughs> right? Instead of an okay, okay. So not all of us, but some of us. Can you go ten days between doing laundry? A lot of us older people or people with very busy schedules, we put off all our laundry till the weekend. Do you have enough laundry to last all the way through that? You would require more stuff. You would require more yeah in a modern day sense yeah you, but back if you ain't got but like one bear skin <laughs> you know whatever it is you're wearing maybe yeah sheep but could you go 10 days between going to the well for some water well they don't look at it know? that way i mean they don't they don't care about any of that stuff that's in the mess just living you know if you knew that you had to get up and chop firewood all the time or you were going to freeze to death or whatever if you even had firewood that's just part of what you do yeah but what they're saying is that the intercalary month probably dedicated to the deities of the site, is represented by five trill horns in the center of the site, and four station stones outside the Sarsen Circle provide markers to notch up until a leap day. Oh, God. See, our time accounting doesn't really work because we have to add in things like leap days and leap years and stuff to try to keep it on track. Because we have a bastardized version of the original Egyptian and Zoroastrian calendars. The original Egyptian and Zoroastrian calendars were... Strongly based in creating longer days for certain things, yes. uh, based on religious stuff and like seasons and things like that. When it got anglicized, or I don't know what you would call it, by like the Catholic Church and adopted, modified, yes, nothing matches up. And even before that, the Romans tried to do the same thing. Well, I mean, if you look at so, that, even the Chinese had to run thing. Yeah, and. Time worked for them, time worked for these people, but then once we all tried to, this is the way it is, that's when it really started to go. Well, straight. I mean, okay, let's look at our entire numbering system that we use currently um, when it comes to, like, money and everything else. And this is really, you know, speaking in an infantile view of the entire yeah. thing because I don't claim to be smart. We don't factor in zero. I know. So if we didn't factor in zero, we probably didn't factor in zero. And that's why it took such a long time to figure things out. It's like, oh, you got to factor in zero. So if you said, hey, I need 10 numbers, I'm going to say zero through nine. Mm-hmm. Zero, one, two, three, and get nine. It never stops at 10, right? Because that's 11 numbers. Because zero is a freaking number. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's just kind of a thing where basically it says that since none of the arrangements within Stonehenge seem to match the 12 months that make up a year, um, it's possible that some of the missing or moved stones on the site were responsible for keeping track of those leap days. It's, what is clear is that the architecture of Stonehenge has been split into two halves to match the two solstices. Hmm. So if their calendar is working off 10-day weeks to give you the solstices correctly in those windows to give you a factor of time or accountability to factor time in the solstices, that makes sense. Yeah. It's- now, that is based off of a lot of the other huge you know monolithic calendar site or geolithic or geolithic or monolithic calendar sites out there how many of those are not being correctly figured out because they're not factoring for uh, a longer work day well remember when like 10 days instead of seven remember that very interesting and a little um hard to digest documentary we watched on chaco canyon yeah about how they also had like 
because things had either fallen apart or things were destroyed, the Chaco uh, Canyon monuments. And the outlier out there. And the outliers. The outliers themselves lined up with certain solstices. Yeah, but they didn't quite match. Because we were still basing things on number systems. Right. And certain how we viewed certain days. We do stupid stuff like, oh, let's explain that by saying that, oh, well, the Earth's mantle has shifted, and that's why it doesn't line up. Or maybe our numbers are just wrong from the beginning. God yeah. be, you know, how dare somebody who's doing math to go, hmm, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, when you, can you imagine doing it, putting everything into play, and then looking back and going, ooh, we didn't factor in for this. <laughs> and then the whole thing is wrong. You're like, oh, now i got to fix what's wrong by making it even the way it is. more difficult. I mean. I still think algebra was created as a joke to solve for some, you know. <laughs> I dropped something on the floor, everybody. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> I just, I think modern society and modern humanity, our biggest flaw is that we have all these different number systems, not just for dates and the concept of time, but in general. I mean, I yeah, I'm reading a lot of sci-fi right now, but. One of the things I've noticed is some of these sci-fi worlds that people build, each culture that gets talked about in some of these sci-fi novels, their whole society runs on a base number, whether it's for time or society or, like, governing bodies. Everybody has, like, this base number, very scientific. Yeah. And, you know, that's all about accountability. Yeah. To make sure that you're where you're supposed to be at the time that you say you're going to be there or the time it's been agreed upon. But those sci-fi cultures, like, let's just say one culture functions purely on base 10. That means 10 day weeks or uh, 10 day or 10 hour work days. Um, pillars of the government represent the number 10, things like that. Whereas us, uh, current modern society, we have the seven day work week. We have um, different things, not just like days and time and things like that, but we have different number systems and they have like a base of eight or a base of five or nine. Our computer languages have different base numbers, you know, things like that. I'm like, could we be better if we all adopted a singular base? Well, imagine system. if we're just all doing it wrong. Yeah. You know, but I don't know. It's a thing where you go, huh, that's interesting for about 30 seconds and then go, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to think about this stuff because I mean, really at the end of the day, when you're factoring for errors by making these sort of, dis- it, it just seems like, when you watch enough shows and you find out like the earth is exactly this many miles from the sun and this is exact, all these exact numbers, right? And pi is an exact number of, and we're looking at like, oh man, we're running out of time. Let's add a leap year. Yeah. Oh man, our days are all wrong. I'm going to add a couple of days here. You know, it just seems like a, a bandaid fix for having it been incorrect. And we're so ingrained in it. And I know somebody right now is going, yeah, like the U S and the metric system. Why can't you guys just get on with the metric system? <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you why. Mr. What? Four liters make up a gallon. Do you think I really want to pay like $12 and something for a gallon of gas like you suckers are in, in Europe? I mean, even if you do like a dollar eighty eight per liter and it takes four liters to make it. I might be wrong with that. It might, it might, I'm pretty sure it's four <laughs> liters, right? It takes four liters to make up a gallon. How much is that? I'm just going to let you hang yourself on this. You one. know what? You can let me hang myself all because I know how much a gallon costs. And right now we're looking, in some places we're looking at like four dollars a gallon of gas. And so if if four liters do make up a gallon, that's a dollar a liter. And when I was in England a long time ago, and I was at a gas station, a petrol station, if you will, and I seen the sign and it said three dot five six PL or had an L next to it for liter. And I asked the guy, I'm like, what, 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 is, how, what does that work out to be a gallon? And he was like, you know, oh, yeah, just times it by four or three, seven, nine or some crazy number like that. I'm like, I, I'm not paying 12 bucks for a gallon of gas. And I, 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 I sincerely think that when I was a youngster and we were trying to jump into the metric system, because it was like, we're all going to be metric, and we're going to learn the Dewey Decimal System for libraries, right, which was also a failure, and they taught it in school, somebody said, wait a minute, this is the beginning of the gas crisis, because I watched gas go from like 25 cents to 89 cents in my life, and sat in long lines with my dad Mm -hmm. in our van, because of Jimmy Carter, who was not a good president, and I'll fight anybody in the front yard for that because, you know, hey, we all of a sudden had to become, we were never dependent on foreign oil until him. 
you know, and again, I may be wrong. This is how I'm remembering it. That when they said, yeah, well, <clears throat> if we go to the liter based sell sales where you buy gas per liter and gas will be like, you know, 65 cents a liter, not a big deal. And people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's 1977, 1978. You want me to pay like $5 a gallon for gas? I think that's when we said you can take the metric system and throw it in the trash can. <laughs> because if, even if they said, well, you can do metric, but we're not going to do that for gasoline. We'll just use Imperial U.S. No. Because you know that's a lie. Mm-hmm. It won't take long. Okay. Yeah. We can't even do math as it is. <laughs> as a society, you know. If yeah, it's we're like, talking about math. Yeah, if, if it's <laughs> like, you know, if your total is 405 and you hand a kid at McDonald's, Five dollars and five cents. So you break the system. I had to do that like twice. You're like, just give me a dollar back, dude. I don't want ninety five cents in change. It's gonna fall over the floor. I don't even use change. I've had to do that twice this week. Um it was like four dollars and eleven cents was one thing. Oh uh, yeah. And I handed them four dollars and twenty six cents because I just couldn't find all the change. And they didn't know what to do. Oh my god, I accidentally got like two dollars back. Yeah. I was just like, and then you know, you can't do math good enough to figure out how much you're going to give them back. So I got like a free dollar until I started walking out of the store, and I was like, "Oh, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's a thing. I don't know. We're going to go off a little bit of a tangent there, but the idea is that you know, oh, if you do a ten day work week, the calendar makes sense. It just starts to makes me think. Okay, well, huh? I wonder what the, it, you know. Now I got to look up what the Mayan calendar. What? How many days are? Yeah, I don't know. Well, we all know it didn't end in 2012, or did it? Are we living in the end times? Like maybe it's not. A, maybe it's not a quick thing. Maybe it's just a slow burn. The Mayans had 13 days in their week. See, and here's something. Maybe they're just making the calendar work for them. Jeez. Maybe they don't give a crap. It's all about accountability. Trying to tell dude when he needs to be at work, or when you need to get up, or when you need to go to bed. It's all about a factor of control that we don't need. And that's why when you get older, you get more inconvenienced by things. You get aggravated. You're like, I just want to be free, bro. I just want to sit on the porch. The ancient the Chinese also use 10 days. Huh. The 10 heavenly stems and 12 earthly branches were used to mark the days. Shocking. Which would what follow in the 12 months, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So did we just go to seven-day work weeks or just make seven weeks in general when we started to you know, get past, like, maybe into the industrialized civilization sort of thing? Hmm. I don't think so, because back then no. they didn't give a crap. Uh, who knows? Anyway, if you have an idea, let us know. We have a, a place for you to contact us. Do it on uh, Facebook or something. That'd be nice. <laughs> All right. So um, we talked about this in our previous mm-hmm. podcast, and we have been talking about this in podcasts throughout the past couple of years, and the idea that a lot of the UFO-type stuff that we see may not necessarily be from another planet, you know, and that we do think that, and I'm saying we mostly, um, that a lot of what we are seeing is, advanced military technology that's been created put in place by our own governments right Mm -hmm. and that they're keeping a lot of things secret and we talked about like the u.s navy and alternative propulsion patents and things like that and then we start seeing all these you know sightings and crafts and disclosure ideas kick out and you and uaps and you know atip and all sorts of crazy stuff and we kind of surmise the idea that maybe a lot of this is actually just the beginnings of this technology starting to get out and be get, getting to the point where it needs to be sort of introduced into society so that the companies that actually have created this technology can start to capitalize on it before someone else does. And it's a thing. And then if we look at you know, the advancement of technology, how, we, you know, like from 19, we were, what, flying biplanes in 1916, and then less than 28 years later we've got jets. Mm-hmm. It's a huge technological leap. <clears throat> and the idea that some of these sightings that were being seen, you know, whizzing around and flying next to warships and captured by fighter plane cameras and tapes and things like that and put into place and the whole disclosure thing <laughs> is really just technology. And you got the government saying, hey, we don't know what it is, it's not ours. And then you got these knuckleheads that created a company. And this has been going on since 2018 where, you know what they fly their drones with? What? Ion technology. Okay. You know what ion technology is? No. <clears throat> I don't either, but you, you bombard ions or whatever, and it creates lift and propulsion and things like that. They have a drone that looks like it's got a pizza box strapped to its head that can lift two pounds 
and fly for 15 minutes and it doesn't make a sound. Hmm. It's like doesn't have any mechanical parts and pieces to make a sound and it creates its own ion field around it and it creates this weird sort of optical effect when you kind of look at it. And this is just a startup company. Yeah, I'm trying. This has been going on for a while. So if, if a startup company is magically smart enough to figure it out, we have things like DARPA in place. Who's to say we haven't been doing this for the 30, 40 years or even earlier? Hmm. So if you can create a drone that can basically fly without making a sound at all using ions and things like that and create incredible lift and thrust and, and not have to worry about G-forces and stuff, imagine how much of what we're seeing and we can't explain is really just the military hmm. or high technology. High technology creates high strangeness. True. You heard it here first. We're going to copyright that. <laughs> and there's even video. Ion propulsion drone at the UAV Expo. I watched it on YouTube because I was trying to figure out some things. I'm like, wow, look at that. They stack these plates and it looks like it kind of looks like a pizza box, man, on top of this freaking drone. It's just flying around. Hmm. And it didn't look polished. Like how it was flying, you know, and how they steered it or navigated with it is they would increase energy, ion, or whatever on one side, and it would push. So when this thing tried to fly, it kind of flew sort of crooked, you know, kind of like those UAP uh, videos that we were seeing you okay. know, from the fighter cam footage of it flying over like Puerto Rico or wherever it was. And some of the other footage that weren't um, from fighter pilots uh, they were from like jets anyway so the idea that you have an ion propulsion drone right yeah at a uav expo and that you two are probably in the next two or three years going to be able to buy one of these drones it doesn't make any sound which would make it super stealthy if it has no lights you're not going to see this thing you know if that's a thing that you can invest in right now, who's to say that, that that technology hasn't been put out there and has been in place for a long time, has been polished and perfected by our government or another government? Huh. And we have included a link in our show notes as to everything we talk about where you can click on it and watch a TikTok video of this thing just flying around. It's in a controlled environment. It's not all like, you know, flying out in the open air. It's flying inside a place because it's an expo. This thing can lift two pounds for 15 minutes. It's an ion-powered drone. And you know what else was ion-powered? What? TIE fighters. <laughs> Twin ion engine. I'm sitting here trying to find out more information about this company. So. so if Twin Ion Engine, right, which is short for TIE fighter, if that was around in the 70s when they made this movie, mm-hmm. you know, hey, man, science fiction becomes science fact, right? Yeah. Where did that person figure that out from? And we've got ion engines that are supposed to be on propulsion for spacecraft and things like that. I mean, who's, just because you can use it in space doesn't mean you can't use it here in this particular instance. At least that's what it looks like. Hmm. So imagine if you had a pizza box 75 feet long, right? And you want to give it some slight aerodynamic capabilities, so you sort of put a curved sort of cylindrical shape to it. It doesn't matter what the shape would be. You could fly silently everywhere. Yeah. Huh, like a cylindrical shape that was seen here in North Carolina in 1956 or 3 or whatever it was, and cylindrical sight, cylindrical shaped sightings that have been happening all over the place since then. Yeah. What if they figured that out back then? I don't know. I mean, because that would be like your, your modern dirigible. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, I don't know. I think a lot of... Now, I'm not saying that everything that we see is all man-made, but I think, uh, yeah... It's more, which is more likely, right? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I, I mean, as a cons- like consumer level or accessible technology, I think we've got a long way to go. As far as the military, sure. It's just I'm still with the whole stuck like mentality that either it's deliberate in order to saturate the field like a false flag type situation or um, yes, they do have a lot of technology out there and some of it's supposed to be hidden, but for some reason, because of social media and the advancement in cell phone cameras, we are able to see more people encountering it. I don't know. Sure. Well, it becomes a point where you start to start releasing some of the technology to advance mankind. 
Right. And it's not done from anything other than, oops, they've seen it. We just got to start. Let's go ahead and, yeah, and let I have, people know. I have such little we've faith moved in on. everything that I don't think, I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know. I just kind of think that a lot of what we're seeing, especially it, to me, some of those, the shapes don't make sense. Like, why would you fly a, a big triangle around? It seems like that wouldn't be, you know, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of spacecraft looking like spacecraft. spacecraft. Mm-hmm. Not like what we have now, which I know out in space, it doesn't have to look like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see this junky looking crap in space, these girders and weird looking stuff, you know, and it, it makes complete sense. But I like that, like, like Starlink and the whole, like, that's a rocket from the fifties kind of look. I'm like, yeah, I can get behind that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It doesn't make sense, but it's cool looking. That's why I think a lot of people like Starlink and, and, uh, you know, some, I, I, I think they think it looks cool. Hmm. It looks like what a freaking rocket should look like, man. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Just... Maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's something to the whole the idea of our science fiction as it became popular in the 50s and moved into now of the look and stuff, of the saucers and all that junk. It's because that's what we really had back then. Yeah, but I also I, I maintain that we are so primitive in our advancements to this day that once we do finally uh, start traveling space like often – we're going to look like, like the expanse, you know, that type of stuff where it's still, yes, there's that refinement of technology, but yeah, well, no, I, I would agree with that. I mean, you if, still have like a freighter that looks like a freighter. You and know? If, you, if, if you're not familiar with the expanse it is a series, a sci-fi television series, or mm. I couldn't say television, but it's a sci-fi series that you can watch on Amazon prime and you probably should. It's great. I mean, it's very clear on, like, some of the ships. Yes, there was a lot of, like, research and technology yeah. put into it. But then it comes down to it, and a belter freighter looks just like a massive cargo ship you'd find in the Atlantic yeah. Ocean right now. In a now, space, it wouldn't know? really matter. I mean, I'm sure you have friction in some instances, but you could fly, a, you know, friggin'. A potato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a square potato. Check out my latest space opera, Potatoes. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember getting into an argument one time about, you know, he he was like, you know, none of that stuff is essential to the flight of a spacecraft for it to look cool. And I was like, yeah, but who gives a crap? If you want my money, you need to make it look cool. And he was just impiscerated <laughs> by that. So I thought it was pretty funny. So, yeah. So there you go. Modern tech equals UFOs. And we're talking about ion-powered drones, man, like TIE fighters. I think that I still think that a lot of stuff that we're seeing is just technology that's just now out there um, and becoming more popular, you know. Yeah. At least that's my opinion. And we have had some listeners contact us and say, hey, and uh, I think that we would like to tell you about, you know, one or two of them, right? So we got a listener comment um, from this gentleman. I don't want to name him because I don't know if he wants to be named. I probably could have asked, but I didn't. Yeah. Because, I'm, you know, I'm whatever. Um, well, because we were going to put this in the last podcast, and we did, and we figured we'd save it up. And of course, we had another comment yeah. we were trying to find, and it became yeah. a thing. So. So, you want me to read this one? Yes, please. Okay. So, this is the first listener that recently recently reached out and uh, goes, You guys helped me get through a really bad case of COVID. Thank you. I'm in Yorktown, Virginia. Uh, great to see a couple like-minded folks doing things r- right on the interweb. Also signed up for Patreon. Keep up the awesome shenanigans. Thank you. Yes. And, and there was an email that was sent. That he sent, and I just seen it for some reason. It just didn't. It wound up being in my spam folder because whatever Google. Yeah. That um, he got a housewarming gift from someone, and it was like skin samples. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like one was like you know Alien from Roswell, Loch Ness monster, Loch Ness monster, Bigfoot. Sasquatch, Bigfoot. You know, yeah. and it's nice little framed sort of scientific nerd looking thing. Like you put like butterflies and stuff. But it was this yeah. nice little. I thought that was actually really cool. I kind of, I kind of want one. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna make one. We're gonna oh. put like moss <laughs> stuff in here. Put like swamp thing, you know, boggy creek monster fur or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, maybe maybe we could use feces. No, why would we do that? Not real feces. It'd be fake feces and be like you know, we will call it scat. You know, scat. Sample. Crypto scat. Yeah, crypto scat. Crypto scat scamples. Scat scamples. scamples. Yeah, we we'll use some scamples. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, and then we also got one from the mailman and yeah. his, his message says, I was the mailman. <laughs> I met you today delivering one parcel. 
You also look into something called Into the Fringe by Dr. Carla Turner, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So that's something we're going to yeah. research and see what it's all about. I can say that person also um, made a suggestion about NDEs, like doing a little research episode on. And what does NDE stand for? Near-death experiences. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's something we were going to talk about in the podcast. It's like how does that sort of event or an event like that and medication affect your perception of yeah. reality? Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll talk about that. I had some weird crap happening in the hospital. Yes. So, what do you mean, yes? You meant stink eye. Look, I knew when you were in a parking lot, as soon as I'd be in the bed, can't even see the window because it never occurred to me to ask if I could get next to the window and look outside. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't. <laughs> I went from never having spent any time in a hospital to just living there. Yeah. It was awful. But, you know, I knew as soon as you got in the parking lot, I'm like, oh, he's here. And I would tell the nurses, and they were like, oh, she's not here, baby. <laughs> she won't be here till later. She's not here. I'm like, she's here. And they go, okay. And then they would come walking in with you. Hey, your wife's here. I'm like, I told you. But it was just a thing. So, anyway, kind of move into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Might talk. If you want to hear about that kind of stuff, just let us know. We'll uh, gladly uh, tell you some stuff. And speaking of some stuff. Courtney Cox. Do you know who that is? Yes, I know who that is. She's one of the friends. I know. Right? From that show called Friends? Yes. Well, okay, so actress Courtney Cox claims that she sold her home due to eerie ghost experience. Now, coincidentally, go ahead. You were going to say something. No, I was just going to take on this article because... Well, you take it on. (laughs) Now, uh, Courtney claims that she sold her home in L.A. following a particularly eerie experience with a ghost that occurred... In the residence. The friend star shared the spooky tale during an appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel show. While discussing her new horror comedy series, Shining Veil, Cox was asked if she believes in ghosts or had any experiences with spirits. The actress responded that indeed she had, but that I didn't believe at first. And then she recalled a chilling incident that changed her mind. According to Cox, the weirdness unfolded at her now former L.A. home, which is located in the city's Laurel Canyon neighborhood and once belonged to singer-songwriter Carol King. When the legendary recording artist visited the actress at her new home, the residence's former owner indicated that it had once been at the center of a contentious divorce and, seemingly as a result, there was a ghost in the house. Although Cox dismissed King's fantastic as assertion uh visitors to the home soon began experiencing some unsettling activity and i just want to point out right there it wasn't until somebody pointed something out that people started to notice something weird going on now people who, <laughs> why did you look at me like that like, mm-hmm. because this is going to get into my bigger point okay. which is now people who stayed there including friends of cox's said that they had felt an encounter with a woman who was sitting on the edge of the bed Amazingly, uh, Cox said, King subsequently returned to the house to perform a seance, presumably in the hopes of helping the spirit cross over and depart the residence. However, Cox admitted to being so in awe of her and the surreal experience that I didn't listen to a word. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So... Still skeptical of the strange situation, Cox conceded that she finally became a believer following an eerie visit from a delivery driver. In the process of dropping off packages, the man asked if the actress asked the actress if she knew that her house was haunted. Confused, Cox asked him how he knew s- such a thing. The driver replied, "Because there's someone standing behind you." Following an understandable gasp from uh, the studio audience. The actress lamented that she never felt comfortable sleeping alone in the house again after that and subsequently sold the residence due to the unwanted otherworldly housemate. So, so far, what I've read here is nobody felt strange about the house until the previous owner said something. And it wasn't even something very paranormal. It was just, a, from what it sounds like, a contentious or toxic divorce. But as soon as that started, that was mentioned... All these friends are like, oh, it's spooky or, oh, it's uncomfortable here. And then the same person who mentioned weirdness decides to perform a seance. I mean, I have a problem with that. You know, things move fast in Hollywood, all right? I know. But that's like kind of turning something into 
turning nothing into something. Well, there uh, there is a show mm-hmm. that I think it's on the Stars Channel where um, she can see and talk to ghosts. Okay. It's like it's like a comedy. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. Is this coincidental? And now, I've also noticed something else going on. Um, people who have large estates or interesting houses are saying they're haunted. And either the price on the house goes up or suddenly the house goes and gets sold or rented because there just seems to be that interest in in things right now. Yes. Like, I could slap a haunted sticker on front of this house and sell it tomorrow type thing, you know? Well, I, think the, way, we, I think the way the market's going, you people are just buying houses out of fear. Yeah, that's true. So, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I have a problem with that because I've just, I've noticed that lately. Like, places that you wouldn't expect, expect to be haunted or have anything remotely, like, attributed to them or suddenly, oh, and this place has a creepy story. I'm I'm finding it less than genuine. That's because you're you're yeah you have a higher level of skepticality. Yes, I do. You know, uh, yeah, it's all right. But I just thought it was kind of coincidental because there's a lot of celebrities who are into this kind of thing or magically appear to become into this kind of thing, um, like Post Malone. Yeah, but who I think has kind of fallen out of it. Um, then you had like Demi Lovato. Um, I can say about Post Malone no, though, he was always kind of really into like especially like well, aliens and stuff like that yeah but I, I don't i think he may have been soured on that he's got his own little little thing yeah. but yeah who knows man it just seemed kind of coincidental but I, I thought it was kind of i read this article as i was watching the trailer for her like you know <laughs> oh, comedy okay. thing yeah you know, and <laughs> so i'm like huh i mean didn't sci-fi have a show about haunted real estate um yeah yeah i don't know if it's still on i don't Mm, I don't think it is, but you know, and that's that's uh, and it okay. So I think a lot of shows now these days um, don't get picked up to go into more seasons because they're not fast enough right out of the gate. You get, I mean, the way yeah. we are these days, I mean, like like with TikTok being the way it is, and you short, quick burst, you know, and people are like really digging it and they want to move on. They don't want to wait five episodes deep before they see something happen. Instant you know, this isn't Doctor Who, you know, where they just basically stretch it out, you know, or I, maybe Doctor Who's not a good reference anymore because they seem to be a lot faster now. But, you know, some of the British shows that you see, it's a long, it's a slow boil yeah, for everything. And, you know, in America, we're like, look, man, I can get chicken nuggets in 10 seconds. I don't want to wait, you know. I think, I agree. I think, yes, there is a lot of that whole um, instant gratification culture because I'm noticing it in TV as yeah. well as books and stuff. And it's like, unless, even if it seems like a slow boil, if you at least know where it's going to lead, you'll stick through it. Yeah. But if the show is like all over the place, you're not going to, unless that's the whole point of the show is to be all over the place, you know? Yeah. But then even then, uh, I mean, they need to get to it, <laughs> you know? And I find myself kind of going, all right, come on, man. At least, Give me an idea. I mean, we could say that about the show I really like right now. So, well, why don't you say it? Blind Frog Ranch. Yeah, there's a lot of people hating on that show. It's, I know. it's fakery, and it's like, okay, well, we've watched Blind Show, Blind, blind Show Frog. <laughs> we've watched the Blind Show Frog show, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, okay, it is what it is. They're probably going to be coming back. I mean, if you ever watched the Coast uh, Curse of Oak Island, that thing's like five seasons long or but something. For some they reason, haven't I couldn't get into that one. No, because it's slow and boring. If you're like a 65-year-old man, <laughs> look here, so I like to do, you know, and it's all methodical about things, and sure, and they're doing it the right way, and it's no slight to the show at all because they, they are looking at it in, in a logical, safe progression and fashion to do what they got to do. Are you but, saying I'm not methodical? No, I'm just saying that you have shows that are logical and methodical and step A and goes to B and C and stuff like that. And if that's how you're wired, you love that kind of stuff. If you're, if you've got like an engineering or analytical mind, you love that kind of stuff because you know, out of order or out of chaos becomes order. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, well, that's bland. You can do ABC quickly, but it's still bland. If, 
if Oak Island look, had picked look, up I'm, the pace. I'm trying to defend you, and you're fighting me. No, no, because you just said it's too. The show, I didn't yeah. say you. Listen, listen yeah. carefully here. Mm-hmm. The show is not exciting because it is methodical and basically is drawn out because of the steps that it takes. All right. Most shows Mm -hmm. that you relate to, and I also relate to, are the ones that still have the structured steps, but you get some curveballs thrown in there. Some tangents. No. Some wild cards. Yes, you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't watch it. That's why we like the shows that have four or five different storylines going on at the same time. Let's use a crusty old people show that people like. Mm -hmm. It's called Blue Bloods. It's got Magnum (laughs) P.I. in it. Right. It's got yeah. the kid that, you know, basically shot himself and, uh, you know, Danny Wahlberg or Donnie Wahlberg, you know. Yeah. And so you, you got the storyline with him. And then you've got Tom Selleck. You know, he's got his own storyline. And then you have the uh, district attorney chick. She has her storyline. And then you have, um, you know, the sergeant and his, okay. his wife. What's her face? What's, his, what's her name? Oh. Exactly. Diaz. No, her name is not. That's, I don't know. Donnie. But anyway, they run four storylines at the same time in the same show. Mm -hmm. Now, if they just had the one storyline that took like an hour to get to the point. Yeah. It's kind of boring, right? Mm. And you're sitting here, you know, and remember, one of your favorite shows is that freaking show with Rob Lowe. (laughs) Who's a firefighter <laughs> dude, and they got like asteroids crashing, earthquakes, you know, a blizzard wind. I mean, all this crazy, fantastical but stuff. I don't, I don't think, I think that's kind of pigeonholing both the prospective audience and the show. I think the show's fault is that it did not build up a quick, quick enough. I have no problem with methodical. I read methodical books. Like what? Like sing- I'm not sharing my Amazon Kindle <laughs> list with you. Yeah, you need to clear that history. <laughs> yeah, but no, look, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that that show it's taken a long time, and so far nothing is really. You know, my shown disappointment, for it. though, with like Brian, Blind Frog Ranch is they are kind of the surprises or the ahas are not aha enough for me. I mean, I figured out. Within three minutes, everything I needed to know about Gallium. Yeah, well, you know? yeah. So, and they got good internet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Anyway, I think at this point we're going to go ahead and take a second to wrap up the podcast. Yeah, I don't think we've missed anything. Mm, oh, we didn't talk about the uh, par- uh, fourteen word of the day. Well, I wasn't going to, but okay. now that you brought it out, okay. can you find a fourteen word of the day that's listed there? Mm, no, no, because we have already talked about it from the last podcast. Yeah. So uh, in our last podcast, when we talked about earthquakes and sky booms and things like that, that was our fourteen uh, word of the day. We, we did mention some sky booms that have been occurring since the beginning of time. But every time one of the sky boom happens, and people are like, "What is that? Is this the end of time?" It's like, <laughs> no, it's it's noise. It happens sometimes. Mm. And we actually talked about in New Mexico with the sky booms and the sub or the supersonic sleds and things like that. Yeah. And we included a link to the video footage where you can see the flash and the crazy stuff. So, so yeah. I do want to um, mention before we go, guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. And thank you to our Patreon patrons. Uh, we provide a link to everything we talk about in the show notes. One thing we didn't talk about today is that we do have some new stickers in the Craft Intent Etsy shop. Uh, the craft intent is my Etsy shop, but I do have a whole section of Creep Geek stickers. We have some new stickers in the shop. Patreon patrons got their first uh, mailing of the new stickers for 2022. We are actually getting some more stickers sometime this week. You'll see those roll out slowly as well. Uh, if you want to be the first one to get a sticker, join us on Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> You've been listening to Creep Peaks Podcast. Okay, so anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let us know. Uh, we do this podcast frequently, so, you know, hey, reach out to us and say hello. Yeah. We also have a, a, a pretty nice little Instagram page going. We post all sorts of pictures from some of our adventures yeah. and other stuff we think uh, you might like. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go. So, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.